time and time again, avid fashionistas name the most stylish of characters, and the ones under the mean girl trope come to mind. They visually dominate the screen with their beauty and gorgeous clothes. They're always stylish and glamorous. She looks as if she just has it all, but in reality, she does not. And typically, her storyline follows her scheming or striving, resulting in a humanizing fall from grace, where she grows as a person, and her image evolves to be more authentic. It's a cautionary tale about aesthetics, image, and identity. The mean girl trope has been a common character type, utilized in media for decades. If we take a look at various films and shows, we can see that the fashion of the mean girl characters is very similar across the board. It could almost be all out of the same closet. Style is telling, but never of the whole story. It is a reflection. But interestingly, the mean girl's reflection isn't the one that she holds in the mirror. Rather, it's looking back up to society. It begs the question, why does this trope have this style? And what does it mean for girls or women who love this type of fashion, but get the stereotype or are often mistaken for being mean, unintelligent, or stuck up, even when they clearly are not, because there are women who absolutely adore this style and have the sweetest of hearts and the greatest of ambitions. Hey, maybe there's like a sorority you could like join instead like. You know, if you had come to a rush party, I would have at least been nice to you. Or the other side of the same coin, the impact on people to dress up more, to look a certain way in order to achieve. I am a future network news anchor who's super classy and has almost no fat on her body. Hello loves, how are we doing today? I hope you're all doing great and just having a beautiful day. If you're new, welcome. My name is Michelle and this is The Shake League, where we combine art, theory, and social sciences so that you can create a style well suited to you as a unique individual and view fashion past the traditional surface value it's taken at because there's just so much more than meets the eye. If this sounds good to you, please subscribe and join our community or if you're a returning viewer, thank you for joining me here again, once again, for a discussion all about the impact of stylized imagery, using the main girl character TV trope as our subject of analysis. In order to begin, we must look at the true psychology and, of course, aesthetic foundation of this look, because costume design functions so differently than actual clothing. Costume designers have the unique task of creating a formable person, holding real traits, qualities, and experiences, as well, of course, looks that real people hold in everyday life. But characters, they are only so dimensional. Mean girls look like girly girls, which is a woman who prefers to dress and act in a ladylike manner, such as donning pink, applying makeup, spritzing on perfume, sporting skirts, and other visual qualities that are socially associated with the traditional gender role of women. Many of the feminine style personality favor everything delicate, sweet, charming, and romantic. In my previous video, I held a masterclass and quiz about the seven style personalities, and if you're interested in the visual identity of this style, I would look to that video, but just touching on it a bit. Women who wear this style tend to be very ladylike, compassionate, and tender-hearted. They are delicate and very thoughtful people. But the mean girl, she is anything but this, which just begs the question, why do mean girls wear pink? People may enjoy the style and be so smart and nice, the same way that someone who appears to be might not be. For instance, someone wearing a very preppy look, they might not be as academic and holding as high standards as they wish to show off. And this is very accurate to real life. In real life, the villain or bully, they're not always going to look bad, they're not always going to have a less than coveted look. The mean girl is an accurate depiction of this. They're all anti-villains in their own way, so they have hero goals, traits, and qualities, but they're not as good as they like to appear. For example, a character that looks the mean girl trope and is actually mistaken for one, but is fundamentally kind, very ambitious, and driven, is Elle Woods in Legally Blonde who, despite coming from a similar elite background on paper and going to the same university. Hey Brad, check out Malibu Barbie. Where's the beach, honey? You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? Is that before you voted against me and then called me behind my back? I don't use that word. You must have heard it from Vivian. 
Many look down on her and create assumptions due to her personal aesthetic. They assume she holds the mean girl qualities and is less than due to her style. Ironically, these students go to the same lengths as Elle does for her appearance in terms of styling, clothing brand price points, etc. It is just the execution that is different. Ask. Girls like me don't go out with losers like you. While men and women alike struggle to break free of the constraints imposed on them by preconceived notions like this. Most people, their first encounter of various fashion and senses of style would be through media. The traits associated with the look of the character will aid in their formation of an opinion on a real person, as life imitates art. No one is born thinking that pink and skirts and all of this equal mean and unintelligent. This is learned. And funnily enough, in fashion psychology, when we see a woman wearing a skirt, wearing pink, bows, it's the opposite. We view someone nurturing, someone who is loving. The mean girl, she uses this to her advantage, this innate sense of style and our innate interpretation of it. She twists it around to her personal gain. Let's go into the mind a bit of the mean girl character. She's not going, I love plush fur pink coats and wearing heels and bows. She's going, if I look like this, I can get to that. And that could be the career, the boy, the popularity, the love, and so on, whatever her goal may be. It's very important to remember that style is not always a reflection of who the person is. It can be this outer manifestation of who they wish to be, who are they becoming, or who they feel the need to be in order to achieve. I just wish that I knew what I could do to it is perfectly normal and healthy to modify your look for your goals. It is like the saying, dress for the job you want and not the job you have. The other day we were in the beauty department yeah. and she held up the shoe and wore eyelash curler and said, what is this? You look good. What? She oh, shut up, Serena. This is very different. This one is not as elegant a choice as that one. You'll never be more beautiful or thin or happy than you are right now. I just want you to make the most of it. You need to be called to be queen. You can't make people love you, but you can make them fear you. The majority of mean girls in fiction are very similar on paper. They are strong-willed, beautiful, goal-oriented, and charming. But they do have a dark underbelly that shows no mercy which ironically does not match the girly pink, ruffled, and bow-adorned aesthetic they love to wear, but this is what gives them their edge. They're essentially wolves in sheep's clothing. Even in fashion psychology, the qualities I just listed of the girls are found more in darker color palettes, structural design, more modular, bigger silhouettes, which are commonly found in menswear. Male characters are often viewed in a more positive light than their female counterparts as these traits are historically associated with the ideal image of success or behavior for men. The mean girl is typically the antagonist, the character foil of the nice girl who is the ideal type, displaying how a girl should strive to be like. We see in the instance of Sharpay Evans, who is passionate, has a strong work ethic, and ambitious about theater. This isn't to say that her behavior is always proper, but she holds strengths and weaknesses, as anyone else does in the film. It's always written off as a joke. Thinking very superficially on a societal level, the image of success for a woman is not always the one in the stark suit. Now this varies culture to culture, place to place, even through time, so I won't go too deep into it, but it's also very individualized. Like for me, when I envision a woman who is successful, that image entails a girl in high fashion, she's going to be lecturing, she's going to be running a business and taking care of her family. To someone else that might be a woman in a doctor's coat going into the operating room about to conduct a surgery. Or to someone else it could be a woman staying at home, cooking for taking care of her babies. See how different it is. It ranges person to person. And I'm sure you as a viewer have something very unique in mind as well. But the mean girl, she does not have this. In adolescence, it's very normal to explore different identities, different styles. But the mean girl, she is not doing this. Instead, she's taking on the expected image of a woman way beyond her years and adapting it through these eyes of girlhood. 
Typically, they don't come from very nurturing environments, so they don't have their mom going, you should really pursue your passion in sport. Instead, she's a product of societal standards, the expected image of a woman, how a woman should look, how a woman should behave, how a woman should sound, and leans into how beauty is very blinding. Often, these characters wear a softer color palette or stereotypically feminine colors in Western culture, like pink, white, or baby blue. A lot of the colors and fabrics they choose to wear heavily symbolize calmness, innocence, and optimism, which offsets the negative nature, acts as a shield, and demonstrates traditionally feminine traits which can be used to benefit them. They use this to further their own personal agenda. It's why they're some of the most stylish characters on screen, because these characters are made to put great effort, time, and care into their looks. Being good looking is very important to them. They want to uphold the image that the general public will admire and pursue. Having very pristine, put together and fashionable looks. If we look at Mean Girls throughout decades, they're wearing the hottest trends, the latest styles of that era that a lot of people wouldn't usually have access to. They stay on top of the latest fashions or use their power to set trends themselves in order to assert power. This gives them power because they're increasing their visual dominance, which is very confident in nature. If you're interested more in this topic, I do have a video where I go in depth on how to create visual dominance within your style because this is very useful. But the mean girl, she's using this in a very warped way. She wants to establish power while looking demure and classically feminine, which stereotypically speaking equals being weak and desirable. But we know, of course, she is not this. So when she's being a objectified when she is angry or sad. She won't express this outwardly because it is ugly, no one wants to see this. Instead, she uses this to her advantage. She wants to look as soft as her style is. I really want to believe that was an accident. Then you must be delusional. So they are more subtle with their aggression and mask it when they are playing dirty by using the system to their advantage through their own looks. Serena, oh, you're out of here. Oh discourages the girls from reaching their full potential. They're always caught up on how they should be, how they need to come off, and it creates this psychological glass ceiling. It also promotes the stereotype that women who wear this style are less capable, even though they are fully capable. This trope in their vulnerable moments in private, they actually feel very restricted, almost in a cage because of this. They don't like the rules that they feel the need to play by and don't understand how to break free. They don't understand how others can do so, how they can be confident, how they can be skilled, how they can achieve without abiding by them. I can't stand you, but you also remind me of a young me. So here's my compromise. I want you to be one of my minions. Grace, I want you to be Chanel number six. Put on a good front, but you're miserable. Don't you think any of that has anything to do with the fact that you've created an atmosphere based solely on negativity and raw ambition? But you're so confident without being mean. Hey, what antidepressants are you on? They just do not have the confidence in order to be themselves, to stand on their own and go, here I am. Instead, they need reassurance. They need to feel in control. They need others to look up to them. And the image they like to hold is a very glamorous one. If you authentically wear this style, you understand. It takes a lot of courage to walk into a room dressed this way. And people will really admire it. It's really fabulous. It's really enchanting. And it draws the eye to you. These girls need this attention in order to feel loved, in order to feel that they are worthy. Have you ever noticed how they go after others who have the qualities naturally that they feel they lack? It could be popularity, it could be beauty, it could be talent, anything within this realm. It's the traits of the image they wish to project forward in the world. And it does not compare to the authenticity. The longer they naturally have this to them, she feels very threatened. It combats her worldview. She has a very high social intelligence, but of course, she's not using this in a healthy way. She has to cultivate a culture around her that she keeps in check, that constantly looks to her for guidance. A small, dedicated, hand-picked following that she relies on to uphold her standards and regulates them rigorously. Her close-knit group mirrors these codes of dress found in her looks. This creates a greater social strength in the inner circle through ritual and visual unity, which produces a greater success in conducting control of a social ecosystem due to the salience of the garments worn by the inner group. My sense of personal identity is completely external. If I didn't have capital to fund me, 
I really don't have much to offer. In spite of the fact that they are below her in social hierarchy, they still look up to her, want to gain her approval and admire her when she gets ruthless and cold, because they're not thinking that she's doing this for herself. They have developed this very codependent, unhealthy groupthink mentality. They're going, she's doing this for us, and they get a piece of that success. The higher up the girl goes, or the more in she is in the group, the more she will look like the leader. And it's really not uncommon actually for friends to look alike because friends will have similar interests, they will have a similar background, social standing, they'll have work and education in common, all these different variables that shape our looks and styles. Girlfriend. And I must give her snaps for her courageous fashion efforts. Hey, Shia. So? The shopping with Dr. Seuss? Well, at least I wouldn't skin a collie to make my backpack. Oh. You have to be considerate of the rest of the group. Well, I mean, you wouldn't buy a skirt without asking your friends first if it looks good on you. I wouldn't. Right. But this click takes it to a whole nother level. They are essentially stripping themselves of their identity and they will do the same to others. For example, in the film Mean Girls, we have that line, on Wednesdays we wear pink. And even though this seems very lighthearted and cute and fun, it's actually using clothing as a system of control. It's a bit like a uniform. When you go to work at a company or go to a particular school, many times you will have a uniform or dress code and this hinders your personal identity to take on the values and morals of the company, the group. Rather than self-expression through fashion resulting in personal style, they have a group style. They are enforcing power and maintaining the group identity intact visually. It creates a bit of a camouflage for the mean girl and gives her a sociological advantage of being able to influence how other people see her by using dress as a tool to raise and lower the social standing of others in accordance with her own really unattainable personal style. So she will always be on top, but she can modify the social standing of others when they cannot do the same to her. Doing so, she's actually engaging in a bit of the self-commodification that results in ultimately achieving her goal. We see this often with Blair Waldorf and her minions in Gossip Girl. We see that she genuinely has this passion for fashion and loves to dress up, but there's always a social agenda to any look that she wears. If you're interested more in the breakdown of her coats of dress, I do have a full style analysis individually on her available on the channel. The entourage will often hold the same sort of look as their leader, but will have a special little personal variable that sets them apart from others. The higher you are, the more personal your look can be, but it will never be as personal as the leader. This does allow us as viewers to follow individual plot lines in a story through visual narration. For example, in Scream Queens, the Chanel's all dress in a similar manner, but never upstage Chanel number one. Chanel number three wears earmuffs, which is actually a tribute to her mother. But in this story, it's what sets her apart and expresses her own individuality from the group. If you're interested in an in-depth analysis of the Chanel's look and their group dynamic, I have a full style analysis available on the channel contributes to the false impression in real life that women who wear this style cannot think for themselves, they are unintelligent and are in need of direction. But we really know that this is not true. And of course, everyone needs direction at some points, but not all the time the way that these sorts of characters do. In real life, it's actually proven scientifically in studies that women who put more effort into their looks and are a bit more good looking will receive preferable treatment and achieve higher salaries. But others have shown that if a woman is deemed too beautiful, she'll be viewed as less skilled or qualified. This carries into higher age groups. For example, in Sex and the City, Carrie's hostility towards Natasha. She barely knows Natasha, but diminishes her straight away to a box because of how she looks. She dubs her, and I quote, the idiot stick figure with no soul, and feels better once deciding she is the simple girl of the story or when she makes a little typo in the invitation, but is actually holding a very high position at Ralph Lauren for work. Which brings us to the real life impact. 
According to a study conducted by Tracy Setzman, it can be a variable as simple as hair color that makes a difference in how a man or woman is viewed in the workplace. And this is not a conscious thought, but rather an ingrained and conditioned one. These sorts of stereotypes, although this is a simple example, ones that are deeper, can have devastating effects on real people. It's very ironic because there's very high societal standards in place for men and women to act, be, look, sound, dress, and so on a certain specific way. It's a double-edged sword that women are seen as more competent and trustworthy in the workplace if they dress well. But if you are too good looking, you will have to work harder in order to show that you are capable. This is the quote unquote bimbo effect and men can experience it as well. This is not gender specific. It just happens more commonly with women. Style goes beyond clothing or the way one may dress. It's also our appearances, our traditions, cultures, values, and the characteristics by which we identify with. People can be seen as unintelligent or incompetent just because of how they choose to style themselves. Or if you consciously try to dress in a way that is unattractive or unlike you as a person, it can have the reverse effect because clothes not only modify the body, but also the mind. There's a psychological shift that can be very beneficial, but also very detrimental. Elle Woods opts for looks outside of her own aesthetic. She feels lost. She does not feel at ease. It is completely normal and actually I encourage to modify your look for the sake of professionalism, but she is striving to play the proper counterpart she has come to believe is necessary to achieve due to the culture she is surrounded by. This psychologically combats her worldview, her personality, her demeanor, and values. When she takes on the expected image of success for a woman on the East Coast, in the West Coast, she was this. She was very celebrated, very embraced. And when she modifies to this new culture, rather than keeping a bit of herself intact, she does a full sacrifice of identity. And of course, she's going to have poor performance and hardship when you're combating your own nature that the Tracy Marcinko's curls were ruined when she got hosed down? Don't stomp your little last season Prada shoes at me, honey. Your last season? <gasps> For Elle, though, toning down doesn't work because when you're modifying your look for professionalism, it isn't about changing who you are, but rather amplifying certain qualities about herself that are well suited for the profession. We see that when she uses her identity in the realm of her work, she goes farther than anyone else could. Elle, how did you know that Chutney was lying? Because she's brilliant, of course. Often I talk about how image and identity are to be linked, but this is not always the case. Image cannot be directly correlated to internal traits because of perceived traits. As we can see Shara from Clueless, for example, she has the characteristics, looks, and privileges of the mean girl trope, but she has consciously chosen to be nice. The entire movie she's striving to do better. She's young and learning rather than unintelligent and doesn't have that ruthless dark side many would assume. It is what benefits a mean girl who wears the girly pink style. We can see as viewers that this look is truly authentic to Shower and she is not mean at all. She doesn't have a mean bone in her body. She is just a bit naive and that is a part of growing up. The mean girl uses this girlish demeanor to her advantage. But what a lot of people don't see when they look at the style is the intelligence, the effort and skill it takes to create this sort of ensemble. Image is an art form and fashion is a nonverbal language. It's visual communication. The amount of information this girl can put together beautifully is astounding. A review of these images could differ greatly than someone else's. In conclusion, we can see that personal style isn't always to do with identity, but rather aspirations and personal alignments. Our interpretation of style will differ person to person, not only based on physical or internal traits, but also the mental state and circumstances. Exhibiting how fashion goes hand in hand with values and placing importance and being a visual indicator of where we fall in terms of social commentary that is gifted to us by designers to sports. As Ralph Lauren once said, I don't design clothes, I design dreams. 
If someone judges you based out of preconceived notions, I hope that you remember they are not expressing an original opinion. They're regurgitating information that they have been made to believe is true. And that does not mean it has to be your reality. I hope that you look at yourself with your own eyes and see the beauty in yourself, that you are enough and it's okay to dress different, to look different, to express yourself outwardly. It takes so much courage to be original and you don't have to make yourself small just because someone is not original as you in their own thoughts. If you love this style, I hope you indulge in it each and every single day and dress up to your heart's content. Or if you're someone feeling pressure to maybe look a certain way like this or feeling a need to uphold an image in order to succeed, I hope you find something that works for you, a style that makes you feel embraced and empowered. And that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications and comment. Thank you so much for watching.